kalikasang sa mga dayuhan at katutubo. Ano-ano ang mga iyon? Ito ang mga tips ko sa inyo. Una, maging magiliw tayo sa mga taong kaiba sa atin ang pisikal na inyo. Dapat nating isaisip na iba man ang kulay ng kanilang balat, kakaiba man ang kanilang salita, ay pagtatawanan natin sila. Bagkus, pakikitunguhan pa rin natin sila ng maayos. Sabi nga sa tula kanina, iba-iba man ang ating katauhan, ang lumikha sa atin ay iisa lamang. Tip number two. Igalang natin ang pagpapahayag nila ng salita ng Diyos. Ano ang nakikita nyo sa larawan? Isang Muslim na nagdarasal. Gayan rin ba ang paraan ng inyong pagdarasal? Kung ikaw ay kristyano, malamang hindi. Sa isang pamayanan, di natin maiiwasan na magkakaiba tayo ng relihiyon. At kung magkakaiba ng relihiyon, ibig sabihin, hindi magkakapareho ang ating pagpapahayag ng salita ng Diyos. Tulad ng pinapakita sa larawan. Pagtatawanan ba natin ang paraan ng pagdarasal ng mga Muslim? Siyempre, hindi. Sabi nga nila, ang Muslim at mga Kristiyano ay parehong mga Pilipino pa rin. Kaya nararapat lamang na irespeto ang anumang gawain o pagpapahayag nila ng kanilang relihiyon. Pangatlo, ano ang ating gagawin kung magkakaiba ang ating opinion. Dapat na maging pagalang pa rin. Matamang makinig sa opinion ng iba. Lahat tayo ay may kalayaang ihayag ang opinion o ideya pero sa mahinahong pamamaraan. ba? Diba? Ayon nga sa isang kasabihan, walang hindi nakukuha sa diplomasya. Ulitin ko ha, Walang hindi nakukuha sa diplomasya. Panghuli, maging malugod na tagapanood sa mga palabas o kultura ng ibang bansa. Kung tayo ay nakapanood o nakakasaksi ng mga palabas, ng mga dayuhan o ng mga katutubo, maaaring ka- kaiba ito sa ating nakagisnan. Marapat lamang na magpakita, tay- magpakita tayo ng pagtanggap sa mga palabas na ito, tulad ng inyong nakikita sa larawan. Ano sa tingin ninyo ang ipinagdiriwang ng mga Chino? Ito ang Chinese New Year, katatapos lang yan. Makulay at may kakaibang ritual silang ipinapakita, hindi ba? Pamilyar ba kayo sa pagsindi nila ng insenso? Pag-alay ng pagkain. Dapat nating igalang ang mga bagay na iyon. Hindi natin dapat pagtawanan, kutsain, o insultuhin sapagkat ito ay ekspresyon ng kanilang kinagis ng kultura. Hayan mga bata, na isa-isa na natin ang mga paraan kung paano natin maipapakita ang paggalang sa mga dayuhan o mga katutubo. Tandaan na ang paggalang sa isang tao ay isang mabuting ugali na dapat nating taglayin. Ito ay isang hakbang sa pagkamit ng mapayapang pamayanan. Kapag ginagalang ng lahat ng kany- ang kanyang kapwa, tiyak walang magkakagalit. Dahil nirerespeto ang karapatang pantao. Sabi nga, kung ano ang nais mong gawin nila sa iyo, ay siya gagawin mo sa iyo sa iyong kapwa-tao. Ito ay hindi lamang naipapakita sa salita, kundi sa kilos at gawa. Ngayon, tapos na ang ating leksyon. Oras na upang tasahin at sukatin ang kaalaman at kabutihang natutuhan ninyo 
ngayong araw. May dalawang gawain lamang kayong sasagutan na makikita sa inyong module. Ito ay ang subukin na nasa unang pahina at pagyamanin sa pahina lima hanggang anim. Kung sakaling kayo ay nahihirapang sagutin ang mga gawain ito, maaari kayong humingi ng tulong kay nanay, tatay o sa mas nakakatanda sa inyo. Huwag din kayong mag-atubili na tawagan o i-text ang inyong guro sa inyong paaralan. Sabi nga nila, Huwag mahihiyang magtanong. Laging itanim sa isip na hindi kayo nag-iisa. Mga bata, buksan ang inyong module sa unang pahina. Para sa subukin, ang inyong gagawin ay basahin at suriin ang mga pangungusap sa bawat bilang. Tukuyin kung ito ay nagpapakita o hindi nagpapakita ng paggalang sa dayuhan. Isulat ang NP kung ang pangungusap ay nagpapakita ng paggalang at HNP naman kung hindi. Halimbawa, para sa unang bilang, pinagtawanan ni Abel ang nakasalubong niyang negro habang papasok siya ng paaralan. Tama ba ang kanyang ginawa? Siyempre, hindi tama yon, Kaya, HNP ang tamang sagot. Pagkatapos niyong masagutan ang subukin, ay muling ilipat ang inyong module sa ikalimang pahina para sa pagyamanin. Ang gagawin niyo lamang ay buuin ang mga pahayag ng may paggalang sa anumang ideya o opinion. Piliin sa loob ng kahon ang angkop na karugtong na pariralang bubuo ng pahayag. Titik lamang ang sulat ha. Magbigay ako, magbibigay ako ng isang halimbawa. Subukin nating subukan nating sagutin ang unang item. Bagamat kakaiba ang itsura ng mga katutubo, puwang. Pumili kayo ng sagot sa loob ng kahon. Alin sa mga pariralang na sa loob ng kahon? Ang angkop na karugtong ng unang item. Bagamat kakaiba ang itsura ng mga katutubo, nararapat din natin silang igalang. Tama yon. Alam kong kayang-kaya niyong sagutin ang mga yan. Napakadali, hindi ba? Sana ay naunawaan ninyo ang konsepto ng ating aralin ukol sa paggalang sa mga dayuhan sa pamamagitan ng mabuting pagtanggap o pagtrato sa mga katutubo at dayuhan. Huwag nating kalilimutan na ang bawat isa sa atin ay dapat may kaalaman sa paggalang sa kapwa. Kaiba man ang anyo, gawi, paniniwala at kulturang kinagisnan. Ang kultura ng iba't ibang bansa ay nakakatulong sa pagpapayaman at paglinang ng buhay. Nagkakaroon tayo ng pagkakataon na makilala ang ibang tao, ang kanilang paniniwala, kakayahan, damdamin at pamumuhay. Tandaan ang mga tips na binigay ko sa inyo kanina. Maging magiliw sa mga taong kaiba ang pisikal na inyo. Igalang ang pagpapahayag nila ng salita ng Diyos. Maging magalang sa pakikinig ng opinyon ng iba. Maging malugod na tagapanood sa mga palabas o kultura ng ibang bansa o ng kadutubo. Kaya naman, sa susunod na ikaw ay makakakita ng dayuhan o katutubo na kakaiba, na kakaiba ang anyo o itsura, alam nyo na ang inyong gagawin. Alam nyo na kung paano maipapakita sa kanila ang tamang pagtanggap o pagtrato. Ang aking mga nabanggit kanina ay mga gawain na nakapaloob sa inyong module. Bukod dyan, ay may inihanda akong maikling pagsusulit. 
Huwag kayong mag-alala sapagat madali lamang ito. Ganito lamang ang inyong gagawin. Basahing mabuti ang mga pahayag at piliin ang titik ng tamang sagot. Ang napili niyong titik ay isusulat lamang sa patlang bago ang bilang. Halimbawa, sa unang bilang, sa isang pangkat, di maiiwasan ang pagtutunggali ng mga opinyon. Kung ikaw ay leader ng pangkat, ano ang kailangan mong gawin upang maalis sa mga miyembro ang di pagkakaunawaan? So, alin dyan ang inyong tamang sagot? So, letter C. Kausapin sila at ipaunawa ang halaga ng pagkakaisa bilang pangkat. Panalangin ko na anumang konseptong inyong natutunan sa araw na ito ay inyong maisabuhay araw-araw. Muli, ako ang inyong guro sa edukasyon sa pagpapakatao sa ikalimang baitang, Teacher Jesley R. Bautista. Nagpapaalala na piliing maging mabuting tao sa lahat ng panahon at pagkakataon. Hanggang sa muli, paalam! Ngayong taon bukod sa sunod-sunod ng mga bagyo na tumama sa Pilipinas at nagdulot ng malawakang pagbaha, isa pang malaking pagsubok ang kinailangang harapin, hindi lamang ng ating bansa, kundi ng buong mundo. Ito ay ang pandemyang COVID-19. Tunay nga na naging mapanghamon ang taong 2020 para sa ating mga Pilipino. Ngunit sa kabila ng lahat ng ito, anuman ang mga pagsubok na kailangan nating malampasan, palaging nariyan ang ating mga magigiting na frontliners at first responders na laging handang magligtas ng buhay at maglingkod sa mga kababayan nating nangangailangan ng tulong. I assure everyone that your government is on top of the situation. I guarantee you that your government will do its best to provide assistance in the form of shelters, relief goods, financial aid, and post-disaster counsel. Rest assured, the government will not leave anybody behind. We will get through this crisis, I assure you. As one nation, kapit po tayo, mga kababayan, magbayanihan po tayong lahat. Nararapat lamang nabigyan natin sila ng pagpupugay para sa kanilang ipinapamalas na kabayanihan. Hindi alintana ang anumang panganib. Magampanan lamang ang kanilang tungkulin. Kahangahanga ang dedikasyon ng mga bayaning responders sa kanilang trabaho at pagmamalasakit sa kapwa. Ibinubuwis maging ang sariling buhay para sa kaligtasan ng ating mga kababayan. Maraming, maraming salamat po.
Welcome to Aral Tarlacenyo here on RTV Tarlac Channel 26 simulcast over DZTZ Radio Pilipino Tarlac. I am LV Silvestre, your teacher broadcaster for Science Grade 5. The world of exploration, discovery, invention, and technology. Should you have questions or clarifications about the lesson, send me a message at 946 60 We have so much to learn for today, so let's get started. In the previous lesson, you learned that non-living things or abiotic factors can affect an ecosystem. However, ecosystems are not solely dependent on these factors. The living or biotic factors also have an effect to ecosystems. What are the two factors that affect our ecosystem? Yes, you got it right, grade 5 pupils. The biotic, which refers to the non-living things, and the abiotic, which refers to the non-living things. How about this next question? What do you call the area where the ocean meets the land between high and low tides? What is the answer? Yes, it's the intertidal zone. For our next question, what do you call the area where seawater meets fresh water from the rivers? Okay, I know you knew it. The answer is estuary. I guess you are all ready to listen to our next topic. Do you have with you now your module 8 in Science 5? The title of the module is Feeding Relationships in an Intertidal Zone and Estuary ecosystem. The Earth is a huge ecosystem that consists of biotic and abiotic factors. Of all the abiotic factors, which do you think is the most important? Are you thinking now for an answer? It starts with letter S. You got it right. The answer is sunlight. The sun, as we all know, is the primary source of energy on our planet. Now, go to page 12 of your module. That is page 12 of your module. The figure shows an estuary ecosystem. This estuary consists of different organisms like seal, heron, small fish, crab, mussels, or commonly known as tahong, plankton, freshwater mollusk like the snail, shrimp, stonefly larva, it is a kind of insect, salmon, animal plankton, and the worm. Now, aside from the organisms, what else is notable in the illustration? Have you noticed the arrows pointing to one animal to the other animal? That will lead us to our topic for today, feeding relationships in an estuary ecosystem. The living things in any ecosystem, just like in this estuary, consist of the producers, consumers, and decomposers. Again, the living things in any ecosystem consist of the producers, consumers, and decomposers. 
energy and nutrients are transferred from producers to consumers, then to the decomposers through their feeding relationships. Again, it's through their feeding relationships. Now, let us discuss first, what are these producers? Producers are the green plants, algae, or microorganisms that are capable of making their own food by converting the energy from the sun into chemical energy. That's why, a while back, I told you that among the abiotic factors in the ecosystem, the sunlight is the most important. Why? Because this is where producers get the energy that they need to make their own food through the process of through the process called photosynthesis. Producers are the one providing energy and nutrients to the other organisms. Examples? Examples of producers are as follows. Green plants, the phytoplankton, and algae. Please take note also, dear grade 5, the two types of planktons, the phytoplanktons and the zooplanktons. The tiny plants are the phytoplanktons and the weak swimming animals are the zooplankton. Is that clear, grade 5? Okay then. Let us proceed with the consumers. Consumers get their energy by feeding on plants and other organisms. They feed on other organisms because they cannot make their own food. What are these organisms? Yes, they are the consumers. Now, let me ask you another question. Do all consumers eat the same kind of food? Definitely not. That's why consumers are classified according to the food they eat. The first type of consumer is the herbivores. These are the organisms that eat only plants. They are also known as primary consumer because they are the first consumer to eat the producers. Again, the first type of consumer is the herbivores. Some examples of herbivores are carabao, co cow, goat, the caterpillar, and the rabbit. Are you ready to find out the next classification of consumer? The second type of consumer is the carnivores. Kindly repeat after me. Everybody say carnivores. Good job. Carnivores are organisms that eat meat or other animals for food. Examples are the snakes and crocodiles. Again, the word is carnivores. Let us now have the third type of consumer, which is the secondary consumer. Secondary consumers are organisms that eat primary consumers for energy. However, secondary consumers can either be carnivore or an omnivore. Take note of that class. Secondary consumers can either be a carnivore or an omnivore. They can be as large as predators like wolves, crocodiles, and eagles. They can also be a smaller creatures, 
such as dragonfly larva and rats. Or they can be a fish, including piranhas and pufferfish. Sounds amazing, right? Our next type of consumer are the tertiary consumers. These are carnivores that feeds on other carnivores for food. Big cats and big fishes are some of examples. Again, the type of consumer are the tertiary consumers. Now, you might wonder, how about those organisms that can eat both animals and plants for food? To what classification do they belong? You are right. The answer is omnivores. Will you say it again? Everybody say omnivores. Good job. Various mammals are omnivorous in the wild, such as wild pigs, bears, mice, and rats. And of course, humans are also omnivores. But let us also consider the fact that we have brothers and sisters from different groups of religions who do not eat meat. Just like Hindus, they don't eat beef. Muslims don't eat pork, while many Buddhist monks are strict vegetarians. Regardless of whatever we eat or religion we belong, we should respect each other's beliefs. Is that clear, grade 5? Okay. How about you, my dear grade 5 pupils? To what classification do you belong? I guess you will agree with me, you will agree with me that most of us are omnivores. Eventually, all living organisms, the producers, the consumers, will undergo decomposition after death. This time, it will be the work of the fungi and bacteria. And these organisms are called decomposers. They get energy by breaking down dead organisms and their waste. What are these organisms again? Yes, they are the decomposers. Here's a trivia for you, dear grade 5. There are organisms that feed on dead organic matter. Do you have any idea what are these organisms? You are right. They are the scavengers. Hyena, vulture, the crow are some examples of scavengers. Again, the word is scavengers. Organisms require energy to perform life activities. In this case, they need to eat food, right? Please open your module now on page 12. Under what's new? Again, that is on page 12 of your module. Observe the pattern how organisms interact and get energy by means of eating. What you're going to do is to fill in the blanks below with the correct name of organisms to complete each statement. For those who are listening over the radio, here are the organisms present in the illustration. Write it down on your paper. Here are they. Crab, small fish, heron, seal, stonefly larva, salmon, worm, shrimp, planktons, and the snail. Again, crab, small fish, heron, seal, stonefly larva, salmon, worm, shrimp, planktons, and the snail. 
Here are the statements for number one. Planktons may be eaten by blank. Planktons may be eaten by blank. Number two. Heron eats blank. Heron eats blank. Number three. Salmon eats Salmon eats blank. Number four. Shrimp may be eaten by blank. Shrimp may be eaten by blank. And number five. Snail may be eaten by blank. Snail may be eaten by blank. Ten seconds for you to answer that and only the name of organisms will do. Time is up. Let us now check your answers. Planktons may be eaten by any of these organisms will do small fish, crab, mussel, freshwater mollusk, or the snail. Again, planktons may be eaten by any of these organisms small fish, crab, mussel, freshwater mollusk, or the snail. Number two. Heron eats a small fish or a salmon. Heron eats a small fish or a salmon. Number three, salmon eats a small fish, stonefly larva, a shrimp, or a snail. A small fish, stonefly larva, shrimp, or snail. Number four, shrimp may be eaten by a salmon. Shrimp may be eaten by a salmon. And for number five, snail may be eaten by a salmon or a small fish. Did you answer it correctly, grade five? I am sure you got them all. Great job, kids. Let us have one more activity. This time, you are going to identify the following organisms found in estuary as to producer, consumer, or decomposer. If the organism is a consumer, classify it if it's a carnivore, herbivore, or omnivore. Again, I'll repeat the direction. You're going to identify the following organisms found in estuary as to producer, consumer, or decomposer. Then, if the organism is a consumer, you're going to classify it if it's a carnivore, herbivore, or omnivore. Are you ready now? Here are the organisms. Number one, fungi. Fungi. Number two, grasshopper. Grasshopper. Three, shrimp. Shrimp. Number four, heron. Heron. And number five, seaweeds. Seaweeds. There you have it. Let us now check your answers. For number one, fungi, the answer is decomposer. Number two, grasshopper, the answer is consumer under herbivore. Consumer under herbivore. 
Number three, shrimp. It's a consumer under omnivore. Number four, heron. Consumer carnivore. And number five, seaweeds. It's a producer. How's your score, kids? Great job for that. Let us now summarize our lesson for today using the flowchart on your module that is on page 14. There are two factors affecting the ecosystem, the biotic and the abiotic factors. We also learned that consumers can be classified according to the food they eat. The herbivores or the primary consumer, the secondary consumers or the primary carnivores, the tertiary consumer or the secondary carnivore, then the omnivores that can eat both animals and plants for food. Now, the, now that we are done with today's lesson, let us now check how well you understand our lesson for today. Please get your paper and pen with you and we will have a short quiz. Write your name, the section, and the date for today, February 15, 2021. And also our topic, Feeding Relationships in Estuarine Ecosystem. Are you ready? Okay, let's begin. Here is question number one. In an estuary where there are algae, clams, snail, small fish, ducks, large fish, crab, insects, shorebirds, marshes and mangroves, which are the producers? In an estuary where there are algae, clams, snail, small fish, ducks, large fish, crab, insects, shorebirds, marshes, and mangroves, which are the producers? Number two, what type of consumer are the insects? What type of consumer are the insects? For numbers 3, 4, and 5, you may choose from the following choices. Here are the choices. Carnivores, consumers, decomposers, herbivores, or omnivores. Carnivores, consumers, decomposers, herbivores, omnivores. Question number 3. These are the organisms that get their energy by breaking down dead organisms and their waste. Number four. These are the organisms that eat only plants. These are the organisms that eat only plants. And last, these are the organisms that eat both plants and animals. 